Dang it, Spaz. You've gone too far this time. Too far, my friend. Oh. No, it wasn't Spaz. I wish it was. It was my own fault. And I left the island because I noticed there was a huge grass outbreak. So I went to clear it. When I came back, this is what I saw. Burnt down my new tree farm. Burnt everything down. And this was the cause. Uh, stupid lava. I placed a, a wood block near it. I think it was, I think about two blocks away. And I wasn't sure, you know, if it was going to catch fire. I watched it for a while. It was fine. It was fine. 15 minutes later, it was fine. 30 minutes, it was fine. An hour later, it was fine. I left the island, I came back, and everything was gone. So, it took forever, but it did eventually burn. And that's what started the fire, I'm pretty sure. It wasn't the flaming minecarts. Because uh, they don't spread fire. But lucky me, I just recently made a backup for episode 50, so I only lost about an hour or two of effort. No biggie. Hey guys, this is Etho. Thanks for joining me again. And I've got uh, two large additions to the the house now. If you didn't see the cactus tutorial, I've built a cactus farm and a tree farm now. And I was going to build them in the LP, but I figured a lot of people would want a tutorial for it, so I just went ahead and built it in the tutorial so you can watch me building if you want there and get some detail on how it works and if you don't want to if you don't want to do that uh, I'll give you a quick overview of them now so to our right here is the tree farm I got uh, three paths here and by the way I really like this tree farm I think it's very cool uh, so we got water paths that pull us up here. Goes around this little spiral staircase and pulls us up to our tree farm here. It's not done yet, but it's fully functional right now. It's actually really simple. Uh, there's four water sources. All the saplings that fall in the water get brought to the center. And the way this works is actually really cool. Oh yeah, over here. I got a chest for fertilizer. Crafting bench. Chest for the saplings. And then we have a dispenser. Uh, full of axes. So when we come up here... We just head over here, right click for an axe, grab some saplings, if we need fertilizer, grab some fertilizer. I have some bones on me, so I'm just going to make some. And this uh, tree farm is kind of, uh, it only works if you use bone meal, that's, that's what my intention was with this. Uh, it will grow on its own, but it takes forever for, like, this one tree to grow because it's surrounded by, uh, other trees. So it's very, 
It takes a very long time for the trees to grow if you just leave them on their own. So this is a bone meal tree farm. And what you do, you just uh, you can reach the trees from here. They're at eye level, which is nice. And you just spam the right click. And the trees grow. And you don't have to worry about uh, right clicking too many times because it doesn't use any fertilizer if you right click on a log. So just grow all the trees. Once you got solid uh, wood all the way around, you just grab your axe and you go around harvesting solid wood blocks all the way. It's pretty cool, I think. It's a very fast way to get wood. And I'm saying wood a lot this episode, so please refrain from making jokes, because I know everybody wants to. Okay, so I usually just uh, clear out the bottom two blocks all the way around, and then I do the top ones. And above us, there's a glass glass blocks all the way around, uh, eight blocks up. It seems to be the ideal height. If you go nine blocks up, uh, then you have issues with the trees branching, which will will get you more wood doing that. I just know there's going to be a million jokes. You'll get more wood doing that, but uh, they branch up to. Uh, two blocks out, so you have to destroy leaves sometimes. So, I find uh, putting the glass blocks eight, eight blocks up is the best. And I got all, all harvested now. The leaves all die. Saplings fall. Some of them fall off on the side. Not a big deal. Usually I don't collect those ones. Uh, most of them fall in the water. Oh yeah, and over here I have a storage thing for wood and a storage thing for charcoal. This spot here is dedicated to these furnaces to making charcoal. Just drop in a stack. And then I can store them here and when I have a big load of charcoal or whatever, then I can pick it up and then take it down to my storage room. And so usually uh, what I'll do is I'll just go, got saplings, just aim straight down, stand the right click again. There's no uh, dead zones in the water flow, which is nice. It all goes right right there. Got a little bridge for getting up here. And by the time you have the trees all planted again, uh, usually most of the leaves are dead. So you can go ahead and start growing your next crop. Oh yeah. Uh, those are the glass box I'm talking about. They're directly above the soil, eight blocks up. So I finally have a use for all the bones I've been getting, which is cool. I think it usually takes about three stacks of bone meal to grow them all. And I got uh, 24 trees. 
with this setup. Uh, I use mossy cobblestone just for looks. There's a ring 13 by 13 for the collection point. And then on the soil blocks I have these torches so that uh, these saplings won't uproot for having a lack of light if there's a tree growth above them. So it works works really well. I don't recommend you building this style of a tree farm if you don't have a steady supply of bones. It's more of a if you're settled in your world like I am, then this works pretty good. Actually really good. And when you're done, uh, deposit your stuff back. And this, you can't go down the upway. I've got a little drop zone here for an exit. All the saplings that float to the center you can pick up and deposit. Usually it's pretty close to 24. I got 21 that time. Now on the other side is the cactus farm. Pretty much identical. I went to the nether, I got some more glowstone. It's gonna lock us up here. So the cactus farm, much the same thing. Tree farm you enter over here. Opposite side is the cactus farm. Go up the spiral stairs. And uh, if you want details on how this works, uh, please watch the tutorial I just recently released. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. This part's not done either yet. Then I have a drop here, just like the tree farm has. A uh, chest here, to deposit them, and then these two furnaces are dedicated to making uh, the green, the green dye. And when I have this chest full of uh, either cactus or the dye, I can pick it up and then haul it to the storage room and deposit it. So it's pretty cool. I really like these two farms. They're almost identical and yet they do two different things. And I even have this little uh, neat little passageway here. To get from one to the other. Which is pretty cool I think. feeling there's someone behind me. Whew. And it looks kind of cool too, the passage between the two. And uh, so this is where they all collect to the center here. And the, the piping here takes them to the collection areas. Very nice, I think. So, you guys might have noticed, but the minecart track is still here. Last episode, I was really intent on ripping it out. I had my tool belt on and everything, but uh, like some type of a protective mother, you guys tried to plead a case for it, you know? You tried to convince me that it might have some use still. Yeah. At best, you know, I thought it would serve as a science experiment, something that looked cool. But you guys made a pretty good case. Uh, one thing you suggested is to set up some sort of uh, button or buttons or levers or something to uh, control this door to turn uh, the system on or off. So if I leave my base, I can shut it off and I won't have uh, the issue with minecarts getting stuck on the track. 
And that's something I thought about doing too. It's a good suggestion. But I still wasn't quite happy with it because even if I do that, if I somehow have to leave the game quickly or if I forget to, to uh, shut the system off or I die or, you know, game crashes, anything could happen, then I have to deal with the carts on the track and like I said, uh, I can't really destroy them because they fall into these cracks where the stairs are and I can't pick them up. So I would have to push them all, which would involve walking around the whole storage room every time that happens, which is a huge pain. Well, not a huge pain. It takes a minute. But, you know, it's not something I want to do all the time. So another good suggestion you guys gave me is to use one of those furnace mine carts and to set up some system for it and it'll come up and push them all around. And you guys told me something I didn't know, that uh, if you have one of uh, if you have one of those furnace minecarts not on a track, it doesn't use the coal. So you could probably put it on a door like this, and then when you want to call it, open the door, and it'll start going on the track and using the coal. So Combined those two ideas, I think we might somehow salvage our minecart track system here. I think it might be fairly cool. So, that's what we're going to do right now. I've decided to put the call buttons here at all the corners. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of options where I can put them because uh, any redstone wiring risks interfering with my dispensers. So the corners is a pretty good place where I don't have any problems. Ooh, I need more repeaters, I think. So the buttons on all the corners. And then we'll run redstone. Uh, both these buttons will power the redstone. And I kind of uh, mined out the area here already to save time. Oh, actually, I'll give you guys a little tour of uh, underneath my storage room because I don't think I really show you guys this. There's actually quite a bit of hollowed out area. This is the timer room and then note blocks. I hate coming in here because it's really hard to move. I don't know how you got down here. <laughs> okay, you can have this room. This is your room. <laughs> how far down? Yeah, we're way down. Somehow he found his way down here. And the collection points right above us here. These are the torches uh, lighting it up through the stairs. There's the clock. Someone said that, uh, like I mentioned, that my wiring was pretty compact there. And he's like, you don't know what compact wiring is. Yeah. You can't even move down there. I think that's pretty compact. Okay, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 13, 14, 14, you're going to put a repeater, actually we'll run one more, 15 is the limit, oops, get a repeater, uh, 1, 2, 3, four. oh yeah, I said I was going to give you guys a tour. <laughs> This is, uh, well, there's not much of a tour. This is uh, for the water control double doors above us. There's the old, not the old, old, but the old spawning pads that are now abandoned. Uh, we got the station in here. 
And that's about it. And there's an Eats Road and some other stuff, but I can't get to it from here, I don't think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't like placing a uh, wire on uh, soil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, uh, let's put it over here. Uh, this is the other side. So all eight, we're going to have eight buttons. They're all going to merge together. And then they are going to control a T flip-flop. You can't use an RS nor latch for this. Because an RS nor latch... There's a wolf there too. RS nor latch requires uh, two inputs. And we are just going to have the one input, the button. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Wait, why was that one 13? Didn't I say the other one was 14? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 13. Ah, whatever. Okay. It's gonna go around here. Need another repeater. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 1, 2. Okay. And that brings us to here. We're not going to hook this up yet. Uh, I need to lower this all. Uh, I think probably four or five blocks. Because at the moment our Pez dispenser only holds, I think, seven minecarts. And we need it to hold at least eight. Uh, but more is better. Underneath us is the mob system. So it's all ho hollowed out already, so it shouldn't be too hard to add. And I'm just, I think I'm just going to copy it all exactly like it is here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to lower that minecart stuff later, off camera sometime, because it's uh, not going to be all that interesting. And then we're going to have the eight buttons, which can control the system. Pressing it once turns it on. Uh, probably within 30 seconds, uh, minecarts will be all the way around the track, and it'll be working. And then when we shut it off, we'll just press the button again and it'll start collecting all the minecarts. So it's pretty should be pretty good I think. Okay guys, I'll let you out, but you have to promise me you'll stop harassing the sheep. Okay? Alright. Be good. Be good. Okay, what did I just tell you? <laughs> These guys are awesome. Yeah, you can have fun too. Go ahead. <laughs> so something interesting I noticed. Uh, these guys don't seem to attack cows anymore. I don't know, I think, I'm pretty sure they did when they first came out, and then there was a patch, and I think, uh, one of the patches made it so that they don't attack cows. They only attack sheep. 
Well, not only. I think they attack pigs and stuff, too. So I'm kind of glad I didn't uh, work on the wolf thing yet, because if I had made a chamber, uh, I would have been screwed, because they wouldn't kill the cows in the chamber like I had planned. Let's check if there's any leather. Oh. I think I had this from before. That wasn't a very good check. Okay, uh, let's do one last thing before we end this. Alright, so we're just going to go to the nether really quick. And I want to explain uh, one of my new plans I have. really quick, I think. I thought I had some armor here. So, uh, when I was hunting the glowstone before, This game's getting laggy. Yeah, when I was hunting the glowstone before, I just about got lost. I did get lost, and I ran out of supplies, pretty much. And I almost didn't make it back. So, whoa, that was close. So I'm thinking I need to develop some way of getting around here uh, more efficiently. Something I can depend on. Because at the moment I could very easily die in here and lose all my stuff. And I can get lost pretty easily. My plan is just to make a giant ladder. Quickly so I don't die. That goes all the way to the ceiling. And then I should be able to move around the nether by mining out the ceiling and uh, building a base in the ceiling. Because it, I think it's all solid. Oh, crap. Very bad time for this. Okay, so that worked so-so. Now I need to get down. Yeah, so it should be solid nether rack, I think, in the ceiling. And I can uh, mine it out safely and get around uh, through the ceiling without getting shot at. We're falling into lava. I think. This is probably common sense, but I didn't think about it until just recently that I could do this. That didn't work. Oh, oh, oh. 
crap. Come on. Oh my goodness. Where the heck is that boat now? And then I'm just going to have a ladder. And then I'm going to put glass all around this so I can climb up safely. And yeah, that's the plan, guys. Let's try this again. Okay, that's a wrap, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.